Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge. I'm a developer with Cognitect, and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about some really weird stuff I've been playing around with Clojure today, and I'm doing in Clojure today. So, so to start with, um, I am a fan of the C++ um, GUI library known as Qt, or Qt, depending how you like to pronounce it. Um, there's just one problem, it's C++, and I like the program in Clojure. Uh, there are some interfaces for Java, but they don't work so well. But as of the latest version, Qt is shipping with a copy of V8 inside. Um, and uh, this means that we can actually interface with Qt um, with ClojureScript. So let's take a little look a little bit uh, at what this looks like. So if you haven't worked with Qt before, um, there's a designer. Um, that you can go and use to build some um, some you know UI type stuff. You can uh, you know design different interfaces with it. Uh, let's see here. Let me go back to the projects here. Um, so this is um, an example uh, where you can go and lay out different uh, UI components and dra drag and drop them around. Something like you'd be expected uh, you'd expect from like Visual Studio or something. Works pretty well. So what I did. Um, is went in and um, I started today with a um, with the example project that David Nolan had um, the like minimalist closure script um, and I'll, I'll link to that um, and that includes this project definition file here um, so what we what we do is we just include closure script and we have CLJS build and we have an output directory and it does simple optimization and dumps everything into Q, QML underscore CLJS. That then can be included in a QML file. So this is kind of a declarative DSL for describing um, um, uh, user interfaces. Um, now, if we go into ClojureScript, um, we're gonna create two functions, very simple. Uh, we have a main entry point um, and a button click. Now both of these, in order so that they aren't completely removed, by um, the Google Closure Optimizer, we put this export keyword at the beginning. So this will say, when it's all done optimized, make sure these functions still exist. So now we can access these functions from within our, um, our uh, QML file. So we import that JS file as CLJS. Um, you can name whatever you want. And then that's just a prefix for the full, um, fully descriptive name of the function. So CLGS, QML CLGS, core, main entry. So we say once this, in, this little application is loaded and running, um, we are going to run the main entry function, and then we can start wiring things up. So this button is then routed to uh, button clicked, and what we should see when we run this application is a window pop up with a button, and then our functions get executed. So if we go now into a console, what we can do is say uh, QML scene, that's the application that comes with um, uh, Qt, and we can pass it uh, QML CLJS .QML, um, and it loads and runs. And as we see down here, it has text, it says loaded, and when we click the button, it works as expected. So that's about it for now. Um, Everyone may be wondering, why would we do this? I think the correct answer is, why would we not do this? It's another fun place that we can try to get ClojureScript into. The, if you haven't uh, looked at the Qt library at all, it's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. It's great for developing um, client uh, thick applications that uh, are cross-platform. So the library runs on Windows, Linux, and uh, OS X. Uh, these, these QML files are cross-platform. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep playing around with this and see where it goes, but it'd be fun to get core async hooked up into this and use that to wire up components and a whole bunch of other things. So, um, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Um, I'm going to upload the source code if you're interested in taking a look at it and hack around with it a little bit, but, uh, and it's been fun to play around with so far. Thanks for watching.